A few years ago, I put out a video where we recreated an audio technique that you hear in Fortnite. Specifically, what I'm referring to is with the weapons in the game, not only is the volume attenuated based on distance, but the actual audio assets that are playing themselves also change. So that video was done in Unreal Engine 4, and it was using sound cues. So in today's video, we're gonna be using Unreal Engine 5, we're gonna use meta sounds, and it's gonna be a lot more resource friendly. So let's get started. So before we dive in and build this from scratch, I do wanna preview it for you, uh, what we are gonna be building, and then I'll delete it and we can build it again. Um, but you can see I've got the meta sound in there and it does have an attenuation sphere around it. And so let's go ahead and walk into the attenuation here. And you can hear that there is a shotgun sound happening and it sounds far away, but it doesn't just sound far away because of the attenuation. It's because it is actually playing a far away recorded gunshot asset. So let's go ahead and walk a little closer. And so now it's gotten louder because of the attenuation, but the actual asset being played has now switched to a medium ranged recording. And we can go one step further and walk right up on it. So you heard it got louder again because of the attenuation, but because it then switched assets. And the cool thing about this is I can actually just completely remove the attenuation and this still works. Now, without the attenuation, you are gonna get every single asset at full volume, but I just wanna show you that this works without attenuation. So we've got our far away gunshot. There's our medium range gunshot. and our up close gunshot. Now you may also be wondering what happens if we have multiple of the same meta sound. It still works and it still works on a per meta sound basis. I've got three of the same meta sounds in here and if I get closer, So this sound, I'm getting the up close gunshot. Over there, I'm getting a medium range. And from there, I'm getting the low. Now inside our content browser, I've got three gunshot sounds. I've got our close our medium, and our far away. And so let's go ahead and start building the meta sound for this. So like we normally do, create a meta sound source. And I'm gonna call this MSS underscore, uh, we call the other one shotgun. I'm just gonna call this weapon, just so there's no confusion. And we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now for weapon sounds, I keep it mono, just so I can use attenuation and it, there's no uh, masking or frequency interference. Uh, but you know, you can do this with stereo or quad or surround sound files, totally fine. Uh, in this particular example, I'm not gonna use the on finish because I'm gonna be setting this up to re-trigger. Uh, but in a real world scenario, you would be using the on finish if you're tying it to say uh, a gunshot sound. So we need something to play those waves. So the rudimentary stuff, we're gonna get a wave player. And since I'm keeping it mono, we just need a mono wave player. We can go ahead and connect this here. Now, what I'm gonna do for the tutorial that you don't need to do if you're following along, um, if you're following along, the thing to do is to connect your on play here. Um, but just so that I can get it to constantly repeat, I'm gonna do a trigger repeat and I'm gonna set this to one second. 
Again, this is just for tutorial sake. You would bypass this and connect right to your play. And so now we need to tell it what wave assets to play. And I'm gonna do this by using a get. Because what the get node does is it gives us access to the index. So now that we've gotten this far, uh, the light bulb may have gone off for some of you already, and you can see where we're going with this. Basically, I have an array with some gunshots in it, and I need to figure out how to tell this which index we should be playing. And you can do this with a bunch of assets, like say you have subsets in your array of various close range, various medium, various far. Uh, you can certainly work out how to do that. But for this tutorial, I'm just using one of each. So we need something that is going to basically get the distance between the source and our listener. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna come over to our interfaces and we're gonna get this attenuation interface. And what this does is it gives us access to this distance node. And what this node does is it calculates the distance between the listener and the sound source. More often than not, the listener is on the player, but you can set up listeners in other things. Like say if you're doing AI and like NPCs that are patrolling and listening for sounds and things like that. But basically it is specifically designed to get the distance between the source and the listener. Now this measurement, if we mouse over it, uh, it does say it's the distance between listener and sound location in game units. And I'm sure some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now, what the hell is a game unit? And a game unit is simply Unreal's predefined unit of measurement. And if I remember correctly, uh, but don't quote me on this, I believe 100 game units is supposed to be the equivalent of a real life uh, meter. So if we have 100 game units, that's one meter. If we have 1,000 game units, that's 10 meters. Now, we need to figure out what we're doing with this information. And so what we're gonna do is I want to check every time this value changes, so we can do a trigger on value change. And because the player is gonna be moving, this is going to change quite frequently, but it is still more performant than an event tick in just the situation where if you're standing still, this doesn't change. So off of our trigger on value change, we need to do some logic checks. And the logic check we're gonna do is essentially a true false. So I'm gonna drag off here and we're gonna get a compare and we want the compare float because the distance is being output as a float and so that's what we wanna check. And this is where we're gonna put in our first distance. So you can put any numbers you want in here but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a thousand in there just to make it simple. And we're gonna do less than or equal to. So if this distance is a thousand or less, we wanna do something with that. If the value is false, we need to do something different. So if the player is farther away than a thousand, we need to do another logic check. And so we're gonna do another trigger compare and another float. And now I want to say if it's greater than a thousand, oops, greater than, we're gonna spit off true here. But because this middle is kind of a range between two numbers, uh, if it's greater than a thousand, we want to do yet another logic check, which technically I can just copy and paste this over. But we want it less than or equal to 2000. Hey guys, quick editor's note here. Uh, you actually don't need this second compare node. Um, if it's not 
less than a thousand, of course it's going to be greater than a thousand. My bad, let's continue. And so now, if it's less or equal to a thousand, this is true. If it's greater than a thousand, we're moving on to our next check. And so now, if it's between a thousand and two thousand, this is going to be true. But we also have a far away gunshot sound. So we need to do something off this false. And so now we're going to keep that 2000 and we're going to switch this to greater than. Yep, you guessed it. Don't need this one either. Just run off of your false. And we need to run our values out here like we did with the first one. And so this is totally scalable. You can get as granular as you want with this. Uh, but just for the sake of the tutorial, this is going to be my logic check. And so our first problem was getting a float to exchange to an integer because that's what indexes run off of. Floats have decimals, integers are just whole numbers. And now we've kind of created a new problem for ourselves. We've converted a float to a trigger. So now how do we convert the trigger into an integer? And we're gonna do this with uh, essentially a select node. Although in MetaSounds, it's not called select. It's actually called trigger route. Uh, which, if I'm being honest, is a little confusing, and sometimes I forget what it's called. But we have three different sets. So I want to do our trigger route integer 32, 3. And so what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to utilize these true functions to set different values. And so if it's less than a thousand, we want to set it to index zero, which again, if we look here at our array, index zero is the close sound. So less than a thousand, play the close sound. Between a thousand and two thousand, we want to be the medium. So we're going to switch this value and we want that to play index one. And lastly, if it's greater than two thousand, we want to play index two. And so now uh, we just have to go ahead and connect this on set to trigger this get. So we're going to set the value and then we're going to get that value or get the uh, index that that value represents. And that's really all there is to it. Um, you can use this logic in multiple different ways, uh, but just to kind of button everything up. I am going to go into my source. I'm going to select play when silent. And I'm going to go ahead and just add that attenuation, uh, just a generic attenuation that I created. So again, you're not going to have this trigger repeat because I'm just using that to keep triggering it for the tutorial. Um, you're going to have your on play playing your wave player. Uh, you can come out here if you want to do like a one shot and connect your on finish. Um, since I'm re-triggering this, I don't need that to happen. We've got our get that's pulling from our index, and we are setting up the logic to tell it what index to play based off that distance. So I'll go ahead and, and drag this now uh, weapon, MSS underscore weapon that we just created, and you'll see that it functions just like it did before. So we've got our far away gunshot. We've got our medium gunshot. And finally, our up close gunshot. And so once you have an understanding of how this actually works, uh, you can apply this to other things. It doesn't just have to be weapon sounds. So I've built another one, and this we're just playing the starter music that I have looping, and we're going to use distance to set different pitches. So if we're up close, it'll play normal. If we're a medium distance, 
uh, the pitch will be shifted up a little bit. And if we're far away, the pitch will be shifted even higher. And so I've already dropped this into the level now. And uh, I called it MSS underscore distance just because I was testing with it. But you can hear, so we've got that music and it's pitched up quite a bit. Now we're at a medium range, so that pitch dropped. And now the pitch is at zero because we're up close to it. And I know that was kind of a silly example, but I really just wanted to show you that this can be done on multiple different things and not limited to weapon sounds. All right guys, so that is gonna wrap things up for this tutorial. Um, this isn't something that you're probably gonna be using on a consistent basis, but I just wanted to put out the video so that it's there just in case you need it. So if you did find this helpful and you wanna see more of this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future uploads. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. Until next time.